Hey guys, Skimboy3800 here once again. We're back in Beam, and today we're taking a look at quite a few things. Uh, we're going to take a look at some T-Series mods, and then quite a few CRD mods. So, let's start with the T-Series. It is a T-Series, that's obvious, but take a look at it. I have given it a engine cutout window. Look at that. The hood has a hole in it, so that we can see the engine, and that engine is quite unique. Let's go ahead and take a look through the parts menu here. You can see the hood and fender is windowed. You can see a new radiator, because what is that? That is a Detroit diesel. 14 liter V12 engine. And it is quite the specimen, I'll have you know. We've got uh, multiple intakes. We have naturally aspirated, that it spawns with. We have supercharged and twin turbocharged. And if you go to the turbos and go to turbo tuning, you can see that we also have the option to twin charge by adding both the supercharger and the turbocharger. And we're going to give this a quick spin. I did a video of this earlier, but I have since refined it. I have given it some custom sounds. And we're on Big Gamer's mud map just because I think it's fun. And there's many presets for uh, this truck here. Uh, there's like box trucks, there's uh, ramp trucks and stuff like that. And this is the super hauler preset. That comes with both a turbo and a supercharger. You can see with both of them equipped we make 850 horsepower and 2,000 foot-pounds of torque. So we are quite well equipped to do any kind of towing. There's more to be found though if you put on a different tune for the uh, turbos. And of course, playing around with all the parts of the T-Series, uh, you can probably get some ridiculous combinations. For instance, I know if you put in both the regular drive shaft and the long rear drive shaft, that means you essentially double the horsepower to the back tires, so you can make a drift tune with even completely stock base game parts. So, that's neat. That's not the focus of today's video. But this semi does have a Detroit diesel, and the reason I start off with this is because, well, I have gone ahead and added it to the monster truck as well. Take a look. Here we got the Detroit diesel with the race tune equipped. 1430 horsepower, 3500 foot-pounds of torque, and pipe stacks out the rear. If you put on only a supercharger or keep it naturally aspirated, you get quite the open header flames, but that's not on this setup. Got custom sounds. And it got two sets of custom sounds. Uh, depending on what T-Series preset you install, you'll have different sounds. This is the Detroit Diesel uh, sounds, but I also have included a stock sounds, which use the pretty unknown V16 engine sounds, as well as a mix of the straight six that uh, the T-Series normally has. And combining them, you get a mean sound, so I can't wait for you guys to try it out. Uh, I'm currently unsure what pack the T-Series parts will be in, because uh, I have done some T-Series mods, but I've also done a lot of other mods that are not for Monster Trucks. And I've been considering making them their own pack, or just combining them all into adjustable add-ons. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment. Should they all be combined? Should they stay separate? Should they all be merged with adjustable add-ons? Or should there be another pack of mine entirely separate? That's mods that are not charity. Or should they stay how they are now, where like the more boost is separate, the Merlin engines and other vehicles is separate, and so on and so forth. Let me know. Looking for ideas. You can get a look at the pipe stacks too. Look pretty neat. By the way, I have found out what causes uh, the weird... Uh, what do you call it? Drive shaft shaking? 
and it turns out it is actually the limit straps, yep. On some setups, for whatever reason, the limit straps don't know what to do, and they cause the whole front axle to shake. So, you know, that's a thing. Speaking of, the next setup. Here we are. I have completely overhauled the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine that I first released as part of a uh, specialized add-ons. And it even came out before that in the form of the reward for getting top 10 in uh, the last community event. The model is now totally changed. Uh, the materials are all fixed. It now actually says Rolls-Royce on the side in red to be cool like that. The headers are completely redone so that they no longer look weird with different uh, colors other than just black. So now that they have a mean matte gray, matte black to them. And the engine filters are now actually colored. And overall, it's just a much needed improvement. I've done so many other big V12 engines that, you know, the Merlin started to look bad, so I have remedied that. And this is not anything new. We've seen everything about this before, so I'll just give it a very quick drive. It is just made to look way better. And, you know, materials are fixed. What a send. Oh. Big rip. But yeah, I have notified the mod devs of the funny uh, limit straps doing funny things and causing the front drive shaft to do even funnier things. Look at that. I don't know what's going on with that. But yeah. I'm despawning trucks because this is a pretty demanding map, especially with all these high poly engines around here. Speaking of high poly, take a look at this. A relentless, great looking truck. And we have a new variant of the DB605. This is actually the uh, Aichi AE-1A Asuta engine. It was also known as the Kawasaki HA-40, one used for the Japanese Air Force, or Marines, one of those two. Navy. Some form of military. There we go. And it is essentially a DB605, but without any nitrous. Still mega powerful. 1500 horsepower. It's pretty good. And essentially, this is a bad guy engine. So is the DB605, but this is another one. We just took a look at the Rolls Royce Merlin, which was a good guy engine, right? So here's a bad guy engine. Uh, I'm not sure about the afterfire sounds. I may remove them to uh, be put in place with the stock ones. And this engine model has been seen before. It's not new. It's uh, basically a recolor DB605 with no nitrous. So it was easy enough to implement. And the history behind this engine, uh, it was a contracted engine. That means they got the license to manufacture it in Japan from Germany. So that, you know, they had more engine supplier options. Because in wartime, it doesn't really matter which engine is the best. It's more about how many engines can you put out. If you can power a plane or a boat or a vehicle of some kind, and the enemy can't, you're going to have a numbers advantage. And, you know, a lot of times that can win you wars. So, you know, getting as many contracts as possible can be one way of winning just by sheer numbers. So I thought it would be cool to replicate that with this engine here. Does it make sense to add to monster trucks? No, but it's fun. And, of course, we always love the side-mounted huge superchargers. So, there they are. Give it up for Relentless. Next up, Tropical Thunder with a pretty unique looking engine here. In fact, the next two engines are uh, the base model and the contracted model once again. 
So take a look here. This is a French and Spanish engine here, the Hispano Suiza, I think is how you say it, 12Y. Uh, same engine size as uh, the Junkers that I've shown off before. But this is a pretty early example of a V12 in World War II. So it's not actually that powerful. 1280 horsepower. So it may feel slower, but uh, if any engine in the pack feels slow, what you can do is simply go to your tuning menu. And go down to the torque converter, and if you lower the size, you can make it feel more peppy and revvy. And I had a single stage supercharger, I believe, and uh, it was made uh, to be, you know, a backup engine of sorts, or maybe even a main engine. But the problem is, uh, just like I was saying before, they just couldn't produce this engine in any large quantities. So there's very few of these engines actually out in the wild. So, it's a bit of history there for you. This is a rare engine. The only one that was new, it was not very uh, seen. And Tropical Thunder is over and out. And that's that engine. Uh, I, we take a look at, I guess we can take a look at the parts just to give it a shot. Engine, we got the supercharger, got the open headers. Not very many parts you can change, so it's not like you can change the intake on this. Next up, this is a kind of a bad guy engine at the time. Uh, Soviet Russia was, uh, not exactly an enemy. Uh, it was an ally by, like, mutual benefit. Everyone wanted the Nazis gone, right? So, uh, the French contracted out the design of the Hispano into this engine. This is the Klimov, I think is how you pronounce it. The Klimov VK107. 2140 cubic inches, but we can take a look at the power. This is substantially more powerful than the uh, Hispano version because uh, they had a much more advanced supercharger. In fact, it was a multi-stage supercharger, giving it a lot more power. And I can immediately feel that right here. And because of that extra supercharger power, it was able to be uh, very well used in huge Russian bombers at the time. It's quite smoky. We've got upturned headers, so the smoke does get in our face. A little bit easier than if it were in an exhaust pipe stack or, you know, uh, pointed down. But I guess that's what you sign up for. In a huge engine, you get huge smoke. Over the hill as we go. Give it up for the forward super duty truck. And that's some quite tall grass, I never realized. And the last truck we're going to take a look at, the last engine rather, is another Rolls Royce. It is the younger, larger cousin of the Rolls Royce Merlin. This is the Rolls Royce Griffin. So what is this? This is a, what, 37, 38 liter engine instead of a 27 liter engine. So 10 more liters on it. And as such, we have huge horsepower, 2300 horsepower almost in this setup here. We got open headers, smoke everywhere. And I chose the custom swamp thing 
because Swamp Thing's a UK truck, right? And the Rolls Royce, obviously a UK engine. So I thought it would match. And I gotta say, Skinner really did a good job on this uh, skin. Uh, I like the partially see-through effect. I'm not sure if that was a byproduct of getting the body to look uh, like it's chopped up there, or if the whole thing was meant to look like that, but I think it looks really cool. Anyways, this engine has quite a lot of tuning opportunities here, uh, actually. We have the dual air filters there on top of the multi-stage supercharger there. That's part of the reason why it's so powerful. If we go to uh, the engine, Take a look at the intake. We do have a naturally actuated intake as well because the uh, Rolls Royce Merlin could be naturally actuated and fitted into, into tanks, and it was called the Meteor in that guise. Uh, I don't know what uh, a naturally actuated Griffin would be called if one even existed. However, I have given the option. And 1200 horsepower naturally actuated, that's still pretty impressive. Of course, it does feel a bit sluggish here, but like I said before, we go to the tuning menu and lower that torque converter diameter. Then we should have a little bit more happy to rev engine. And in this instance, that's what we need because uh, the more we can rev, the better. There we go, it's a little bit easier to rev now. And there's no really easy way to make this engine uh, naturally actuated without it looking silly, so I don't know, I'll find a way to cover the big circle there where the supercharger used to be. At least it's not a big gaping hole. give it up for Swamp Thing. And of course, we can still tune it further with RPM tuning. You can do that with all the engines I've shown off today. And, you know, it's cool like that. Many, many more options for adjustable add-ons, specialized add-ons. There's one more truck to show off here. And people have said, well, if you have the 6x6, why don't you make it even more? Have, like, an 8x8? 10x10, maybe? No, I haven't gone and done that, but I will show off what I've been working on in the background. We search up the twin and go to this preset here. I don't even have it installed in any packs yet. It's just something I've been working on in the background. Um, You can, you can see the name of it. Let's take a look. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. That's the only thing that can really be said. Oh, no. Also, it takes a long time to load, but there's a pretty good reason for it. Let's take a looky here. I say that as if I know when it's going to load. I, I have no idea. Maybe it's going to crash the game. And you can quote me on that. I don't want to pause recording because as soon as I do, it'll be loaded in. And then you can't see it load in on like a surprise or anything. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Took a year, but here it is. turn you off for a moment. Take a look at this. You may be looking at it. What's so different about the regular 6x6? And then immediately after that, you'll be like, oh, I see it. I have lengthened it. And what is this? It looks like the DB603 engine. But what's that? There's two superchargers. Have you twin supercharged a V12? No, 
I have not. I have twin supercharger V16. Yep. We got even more cylinders, an even bigger engine. Ah, uh, dang. Got the wonky limit straps up front. So I guess I'll move them. I guess it's both limit straps and limit chains. That is unfortunate. But just take a look at this. It's an even longer 6x6 six by, six by 0 0.3 meters. I've extended out the rear four tires even longer than a standard setup because, like, on regular 6x6, six six, uh, the middle tires are actually brought closer to the center of the chassis. And then the rear tires are like an equal length behind them. But here I put it even longer than standard from the get-go. So now it's an even longer truck. Uh, I think long chassis, like long boy chassis, is technically still even longer. I have not tested that out or looked at that, but you know. Here. Oh boy. Um, we make 4,500 horsepower. can turn on the boost just go stupid fast stupid quickly it's not just how fast it goes it's how fast it goes fast you know I mean, you, you know you put your foot down for three seconds and you're already flying so twin supercharged nitrous injected b16 this is the DB609. I don't know if this engine ever made it to production. But like, B16 supercharged. Uh, I took the creative liberty of adding a second supercharger to balance both sides out, because I thought it looked cool. And the performance, I think it was going to make 3600 horsepower uh, without nitrous, but with nitrous. We've added an extra 1,000 horsepower on top of that, so, you know, it's a little bit insane, I'll be honest, but it's a good kind of insane. It does require a lot of cooling, though. Look at that. I've cut out the back Lexan. <laughs> I've cut out the back Lexan to give the radiator even more cooling. Look at how big the radiator is there <laughs> on top of the two radiators on the back and the radiator up front. It's just stupid. <laughs> Like how much cooling is required for this, you know. Owie. Of course, we are twin magic, so we can swap sides from the light to the dark whenever we like, or other way around, or whatever. Got the glowing brakes as well. We carry wheelies as far as we want. That's pretty much all I've been working on. A ton of huge engines for both Charity and T-Series. Don't know when this will be out, but I think it's quite neat to see all these different engines in many different applications. And also, lear learning the history behind each one is a fun part of the journey. Oh. Owie. Uh, is there a place I can go to let this cut loose? I don't think there's a super flat spot on this map. It's all got hills and stuff. But, oh well, if you do have a long enough straight, you can go 320 miles an hour before the tires go kaboom because they touch at the back from expansion, centrifugal force. And, you know, that's a fun time. That's it for now. Huge engines all around from many different projects. And of course, on the mudding map by Big Gamer. I love this map.
And if you have any dumb requests or questions about the engines, you can leave them in the comments or talk to me on Discord about them. I'm all for new dumb ideas. And that's it for now. I'll see you all in the future. Goodbye, everybody.